Welcome to My Secret Math Tutor. In this video, we're going to work with reading velocity and position information just really by looking at the graph. In order for this to uh, work out, there's just one big thing that you really have to remember. The velocity is the derivative of position, so it's always giving us information about how that position is changing. So as we're going through uh, these two graphs, say looking at position and looking at velocity, uh, we're going to look at key points in each of them and see what it tells us about the other one. Okay? Let's go ahead and give this a try. Okay? So I'm looking at a graph of the position function. The way you can interpret this is you know that uh, maybe x represents some sort of time, and the y values here would represent how far away it is at any given time. So let's really start uh, seeing what this is telling us. Anytime we see our position right at zero, this is telling us we're at our starting point or you know we're you know zero meters away from you know whatever. So zero meters away. Of course this could be in feet, could be in anything, uh, but we're at our starting point. We have places where the graph could be going up and it could be going down. This is telling us whether we're moving away from our starting point or say moving towards our starting point. Let's see, so I know, say this guy, uh, this one is uh, my distance is increasing, so I'm actually moving away. And here, uh, distance is decreasing, so here I'm actually moving towards. Not bad, not bad. Now, you'll notice that there's a bunch of different flat spots in here, and those are spots where our distance is not changing whatsoever, so we know that uh, we've essentially stopped. So if this is talking about a jogger and you know how their morning jog went, if they're not moving, you know, the position isn't going up or down, then we know that they're not doing anything. They're, they're just staying in one spot. Okay, so look at how all of these key areas relate to the velocity. So when you're looking at the derivative of this thing, you want to know the maybe the slopes of those tangent lines. When, say, we're moving towards, I have this negative uh, slope, so we would end up with a negative velocity in that position. When I'm at zero or even when I'm stopped, both of those places would, would have a horizontal tangent and it's giving me that my velocity is zero, which makes sense because I'm not moving for any of those nice flat spots. And when we're moving away, like over here, uh, then essentially we're, you know, uh, got a positive slope, okay? Now it does matter on what side of, say, our zero position we're at, because here, we are headed back towards our zero position, but we are actually moving towards, uh, say, the object. And then on this little portion right here, we are moving away again. So keep in mind that our position function is always giving us our distance, say, from zero. We know where we're stopped, where it's completely level. And we can really interpret the slopes as if we're going, say, away or towards. And we know how quick we're doing that by how steep these slopes are. Okay? So a more interesting case is actually to look at the velocity and see what it tells us about the position of a function. Now I'm going to use a completely different velocity that's unrelated to this graph, uh, just so we can pick that one apart. So this is the velocity of some other uh, function we want to know what these now spots correspond to. So the big thing to keep in mind is that this is talking about velocity. So anytime you see yourself in say the positive region, this says we have some sort of positive velocity. We are moving. And anytime we're in the negative region, we have a negative velocity, we are still moving. The only time where we're, say, not moving, or actually we're at zero, is right here. And you can also consider this where you might change directions. So here's what we can see from this graph. 
as uh, this particle is starting off, it's moving, it's actually moving away, moves and moves, and then it keeps moving, and then right here, it turns around, and now it's moving in the other direction, okay? Then up over here, it, it doesn't turn around here. This one stays completely level, so this is how we recognize where it stopped. So not only being level, but also at zero is how you know it is stopped. And notice how that is completely different from the position function. Where the position function was level, any level spot was where it stopped. But in velocity, only level positions at zero you can interpret as this thing being stopped. Okay? So what about these other guys? Well, they are level, but notice how they're in the moving category? This just means that at these places we have a constant velocity. So I have constant velocity here, 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 and here, and that's the only spot where it actually stops. This little spot, this is our change in direction. Not bad. Okay, so depending on how uh, great our velocity function is or how great and negative it is, it tells us how great our velocity is. So the, the further up we go, the faster we're going. The further down below, uh, the faster we're going in negative. So just in the other direction, okay? So look for these key features on your position functions or on your velocity functions so you can always interpret, say, what a particle is doing. If you'd like to see some more videos, please visit mysecretmathtutor.com.